children and there is nothing too hard for you to do and there is nothing too hard for you to do you are great in is your name Shang God, self existing God, Putin God, is God, miracles, signs and wonders, sound. Mighty is your name, sufficient God, this in God, but thank God, she and God, miracles. God of signs and wonders, and there is nothing too hard for you to do, <laughs> and there is nothing too hard for you to do, and there is nothing too hard for you to do. Nothing is too hard. <laughs> Nothing is too hard for you to do. <laughs> Nothing is too hard for you to do. You <laughs> are. You are nothing is too hard for you to do. You are. Yeah, the money. Money, I greeted. I see, is it two people? For you to do. You are. You are nothing is too hard for you to do. You are. You are nothing is too hard for you to do. It's too hard. Nothing is too hard. Nothing is too hard for you to do. No, nothing is too hard. Nothing is too hard for you to do. And there is nothing. So hard for you to do. Our Lord and our God, we thank you. Master of the universe, we are about to give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. All the glory must be to our God. Only Him alone is worthy of our praise. No man on earth should give glory to Himself. All the glory must be to our God. We turn to give Him all the glory. We turn to give Him all the honor. We return to magnify him. We return to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you so very much for ourselves as individuals. Thank you for ourselves as a nation. Thank you for Israel and the nations of the world. We remain forever grateful. Daddy, thank you. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. Daddy, we say thank you. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. It's by your grace only, by your grace, 
we are back to say thank you and thank you and thank you over and over and over again in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so very much for joining us this special afternoon. This is Church on the Air, Jordan 93.9 FM, my voice and your voice. The voice of the people and the very, very special voice of God. It is a great honor and a great privilege to know that you are out there listening. Miss Pastor, Mrs. Edith Atake, Genova Siabana. Thank you so very much for being there. We thank you. We celebrate this. Father, we thank you. We say thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. Father, we thank you. Daddy, we thank you. Our Lord and our God, we celebrate. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. The telephone, where is the telephone? Daddy, we thank you. To you be all praise. To you be all honor. Thank you. Thank you so very much. We are back again this special afternoon. We started a series on condemnation and remorse. We said a lot of us like to condemn others. We don't take responsibilities. We don't take charge for events and things that happen around us. We like to blame other people. And we gave examples like the husband and the wife. The wife will say, so much divorce now. The man will say it's a woman, the woman will say it's a wife. Children not doing well, blames, blames, blames everywhere. Some people are blaming the nation for their position. We gave examples of someone who was lynched for stealing. And when he was caught, he said it is his wife. We were giving so many reasons, so many examples. And we are saying that we should not blame others for our conditions but we should learn to take charge and take control this afternoon by the special grace of god we want to look at self-condemnation and self-condemnation is the situation where we blame ourselves thank you so very much thank you sir we blame ourselves and we refuse to forgive ourselves for circumstances and situations we may have found ourselves in experiences that happened in the time past several years ago some of us are still in the time past we have not moved forward for example a lady that was jilted the man has married or the woman has married but the man is still there lamenting waiting 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 for for i don't know what <laughs> living in the past and refusing to move on and you see some will refuse, they will say, ah, all men are wicked. Some women will say, all, women, all, all men are wicked. Some men will say, all women are wicked, based on their experiences. Instead of letting that be just one in a million and moving on. Again, we may, must have had some business deals that were negative. And then we get afraid, we don't want to invest anymore. Not knowing that the next event may be something that will bring a breakthrough. The light we have, Einstein was said to have tried over 1,000 times. If he had given up, given up at the first time, we would not be having light. All the innovations we have in the world, the great accomplishments and achievements, we are made by men who didn't give up, who did not condemn themselves. <laughs> My senior pastor would always say, that there was a, a phrase, a statement his principal made to them when they were leaving school. He said, in the address, the principal said, so long as you are sitting for an exam, you are the candidate. <laughs> you failed the last exam, but you are sitting again. He said, you are not a failure, but a candidate. So that helped him to continue. And then he sat for exam and read for it on his own. 
having gotten certificates in other areas, he loved accounting. And while working, he began to sit for the ICANN diet. And he would always say to himself that his principal said, you are a candidate and not a failure. <laughs> and that is the way to go. You refuse to be down. You refuse to be downcast. You refuse to remain where you are. You refuse to stay in the past. Condemnation is a pronouncement of guilt. You feel guilty. An accident happened. Maybe between you and somebody else. And you keep living in the past. You refuse to forgive yourself to, and move on. It's a strong expression of disapproval, of doom. Some, these last two definitions have given a strong disapproval, a doom have made some people to commit suicide. In our last clip, we gave the clip, the example of the Indian that killed himself, his wife, and four children. He was owing. He went to online business, and they encouraged him to see Bodo when even the investments were not working again. He said, Bodo, the next one will be better. And he borrowed money and put in. And then it's like the company just fizzled. And the shame of the money he had borrowed, he killed himself. That brings us to our best book, Akkad. <laughs> the richest man in Babylon. It's a very long time we have looked at that book again. The richest man in Babylon. There is a story there that is very, 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 very interesting. The man owed some debt. He asked his wife to go back. To his to her family and he left the town he ran away <laughs> but where he ran to somewhere along the line he became a slave and his slave master asked him questions and he answered and the woman when he told her what happened she began to taunt him she said you are not a man <laughs> why didn't you stay behind and find a way to pay your debt instead of running away. And now you are a slave. He said, you don't have the muscle. You don't have the, 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 the willpower. You are not a man. You are not coordinated. <laughs> and he could not bear the taunt. He said, no, I'm a man. And she said, well, if you are a man, prove it. Are you ready to prove that you are a man? Are you ready to go back and pay your debt? Get your family back and live responsibly? He said yes. And that was how he arranged. She arranged that she was traveling. Packed bags, a lot of food for him on the donkeys and all that. When she got to her family home, she allowed him to run away with enough supplies. And while in the desert, <laughs> when the food finished, he said the face of his master's wife will be showing Remembering the taunts, the man will be taunting him. Say, if you are a man, prove it. If you are a man, prove it. And that kept him going. And he made it. He survived it. Came back and told them how he would pay. And he made an arrangement. He went to all his laptops and said, this is the modality for payment. I'll start to work and I'll pay you some more, some more. Some refused, some abused him, some forgave him even because he came back to pay his debt. We are saying here that no matter the condition, no matter the circumstances, you must make a new beginning for yourself. You must refuse to be downcast. You must refuse to stay an underdog. You must refuse to blame. Some people are blaming the society, blaming government, blaming everything. No work, no job, no this. If there is no job, create one. Create one. There are graduates that are taxi drivers. There are graduates that are carousellers. There are graduates that are cleaners. I had a story last week. A young man was a gatekeeper in an establishment. And then an opening came for a job at that company that he was working. And he went and said, me, I want to apply. They say, you gate man, I better go and sit down. Didn't you see the category of the people that they wrote there that they wanted? He said, I'm qualified. And he brought out his application and his document. And he said, me, I'm not even asking for any pay. <laughs> Just give me two, three months. Let me prove that I can do the job. If I can, then you give it to me. 
And that was how he became a top manager in that establishment. Another story is told of a gate man too. And there is an executive officer unmarried in the, in the, in the company. And while she was praying for the husband, God said to her that your husband is at the gate. Your husband is the gate man. <laughs> you say, me, my husband, gate man. <laughs> hey, now wow. <laughs> I was somewhere. <laughs> Some two weeks back, and at the service, <laughs> the prophet picked on a man, and while prophesying on him, he said to him, he said, look, you must let go of the past. Two years, you were at a relationship, but the woman had packed and left you went to her family and the family never one day asked of you and every effort of you to beg and the nobody's even looking your side he said she has moved on move on <laughs> he just pointed in the congregation at one fine beautiful lady yellow lady that was dancing and he said that's my wife <laughs> he just pointed and he began to look at her like this god forbid god forbid not me the whole place was you know upside down we're all you know excited and laughing what am i trying to say I'm trying to say that a lot of us reject. I'm not saying that she should have said yes, so that that's her husband, no. But I'm just saying that the woman did not say no to God's leading. She told her pastor, told her this, okay, approach him now, let's see. Only to approach the young man to discover that the young man had ideas. The young man was dynamic. He had purpose, he had potentials. But his problem was that he had nobody to train him. And he had a lot of responsibilities. That's why he had to come and work as a gate man so that he can take care of his extended family. And the lady said, if you want, I can help you. This is what God said. And together, they made it. He went back to school and all that. And as at the time the story was coming in, he had graduated from school and was doing well. So we are saying here that don't condemn yourself. Don't kill yourself. A lot of suicide cases that are going on is because a lot of people have refused to forgive themselves. And because they ref refuse to forgive themselves, they take their lives. Like the Indian story we told you. Instead of begging, instead of saying, okay, I will find a way to pay. He first killed his four children. He gave them poison. The four children died, then he hanged the wife, then he hanged himself. What a waste of life. So we are saying out there that the economy is very good. The situation around is very good. And it is getting better and better and better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we are saying that as it continues to get better and better, don't kill yourself. Of course. What is that situation you are in? Make adjustments. Make adjustments. Forgive yourself and move on. We said, remorse is pain or anguish resulting from a sense of guilt. A lot of us are in pain. A lot of us are in anguish. A lot of us have painful memory of wrongdoing. Let us not go that way. Let us not condemn ourselves. Let's not live our lives unhappily. Be happy. In that condition, that situation, make room, create room, and be happy. And be happy. I watched a film several years ago as a teenager. It's a series. They call it the Tom Birds. The Tom Birds is a series. And in this series, the lady was from a very affluent family. But she got pregnant. And then it was a disgrace, a big disgrace. In the high class for you to be pregnant like that so her father married her off to paddy paddy was the father's best hand in the farm but he was very good and he knew he could entrust his daughter to her and he gave him a lot of money say take my daughter away take care of her but all the years paddy tried but the lady's face was always unhappy you could always see unhappiness around her even though they had children. Paddy later died in his old age. And when he was going, his parting words was his wife, to his wife was that, I'm sorry I could not make you smile. I did my best. 
I tried to make you smile, but you were so sorrowful. Forgive me. So in a sense, she did not live a happy life. Instead of moving on with her life, she made a mistake, yes, and there's a man to take over the mistake. She remained in the past. And so she realized her mistake, but too late, the man had died. And so when now her daughter was marrying, <laughs> she said to the daughter, be happy. <laughs> Be happy. And I choose to go that way. When I got married myself, I said to myself, I said, in all conditions and circumstances, I will be happy. I will be happy. I will give it my best, do my best, and be happy. So are you out there? We are saying that don't have this strong, painful memory of guilt. Some mistakes were bad, yes. But you must forgive yourself. You must learn to forgive yourself and move on. In the Christian faith, condemnation and, re and remorse is not supposed to condemn you, but it's supposed to bring you to your master. It's supposed to bring you to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's supposed to make you a new person. And so we are saying here that you must forgive yourself. What is that situation? What is that circumstance? You must forgive yourself. Memories may still be there, but don't hold on to that memory. Live on. Somebody jilted you. <laughs> I love listening to some senior pastors. One of them is Lukoya of MFM. <laughs> MFM, Lukoya told us, he said, one of his pastors, or pastor's wife, I think she's a pastor too now, he said each time he see her, he will say to her that, let me kill myself, let me die. Let me die. I want to die. <laughs> That's the way they will greet themselves. They say, they say, let me die. Let me die. I want to die. <laughs> what was the case? The scenario. She was jilted. And when she was jilted, they brought her to him in that distress. And uh, all she was just saying is she wants to die. She wants to end it all. But today she's a senior pastor. A senior pastor. So I think it's in both. And so when they see they just might say, let me kill myself. Let me kill myself. Don't kill yourself. Better days are ahead. Amen. Better days are ahead. Yeah. Better days are ahead. Hallelujah. That the boy also told the story of, I think, even on his own wedding when they went for registry, I think, so many stories in my head. <laughs> there was a couple that was jilted for several years along the line. That lady that was jilted, the guy that jilted her, in one of the stories, became, is it either her driver or uh, attached to her to suffer? So he would come and open the door for her and salute her <laughs> because she was now married to a big man, <laughs> a senior officer while he was a junior officer. Tides will change, circumstances will change, situation will change. Hold on, keep hope alive. Keep faith alive. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't condemn yourself. Don't condemn yourself. In Psalm 130, Psalm 130, verse 3 to 4, there the psalmist said, that If thou should regard iniquity, O Lord, who shall stand? God does not regard iniquity. You made that mistake. Just as, as our children, as they grew up, they make a lot of mistakes. We will watch over them. They want to talk and use their hand to touch the fire. Say, we shall, no, 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 don't go there, don't go there, don't go there. We'll be guiding them and watching over them. That is our God. God, our God is watching over us and guiding us. But the truth of the matter is that a lot of us refuse to learn from our mistakes. When you refuse to learn from your mistake, you keep making the same mistakes and you keep living in pain because you are repeating the same mistakes. But when the mistakes come, What's our attitude? What's the best way to react? The best way to react is to look at it and say, yes, I have made a mistake, but I must move on by the grace of God. God does not regard... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for the sudden um, movement that caused the noise. So Sorry. So we must learn to forgive ourselves. 
and learn to move on. Jordan has new equipment and they are hyper, hyper sensitive. Hyper sensitive. Don't forget 090 24 20 44 15. 090 24 20 44 15 is the marketing line for Jordan 93.9 send your adverts to that line call that line and of course this program church on the air is subject to your sponsorship thank you so very much for tuning in and listening in we are saying here that don't condemn yourself <laughs> that if god was to regard iniquity who shall stand nobody there is forgiveness there is forgiveness so we must forgive ourselves but we are saying that a lot of us refuse to learn we like to stay making the same mistakes don't do that when you do that then you do not show that you are wise at all at all some 20 some 37 32 to 33, Psalm 37, 32 to 33 says, The wicked watched the righteous and seeketh to slay him, but the Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Have you been judged wrongly or rightly? The Bible is here saying in Psalm 37, 32 to 33, that God will not leave you even when you are judged. All he wants from you is a repentance. All he wants, wants from you is a genuine seeking of his face, a coming back, saying, Lord, I am sorry. But that word is fast, fast, fast going away. Even in our homes, in our lives, a lot of us don't say sorry. A lot of women have left their husband's house because they couldn't say sorry. So men too have lost their wives because they can't say sorry. Children and all that. These are etiquettes that we must learn and keep that help us. If you say you are sorry, you'll find out that the guilt will be reduced. There will be no more condemnation. Yes, they will talk. But it's worse when you don't learn to say you are sorry. And so we are here to say to you that God loves you so very, very much. Don't condemn yourself. Don't live in painful memory of the past. What have you done? That which you can make restitution for, prayerfully, wisely. Because some rest restitution, we don't do restitution that hurts other families, that break other people's homes, no. Restitution, yes, but restitution demands wisdom and prayer. So where you need to make a restitution to make amends, to move on, please do that. But take it to the Lord in prayer first. So that you don't say, I want to make restitution, and then you can condemn other people as well. No. God is willing and just to forgive you your sin and my sins. And make sure that it is well with us all continually in the mighty name of jesus christ Amen. are you out there and you're living in the past feeling guilty feeling condemned i've come to say to you that god loves you oh how he loves you oh how my daddy loves me i don't know how i can only testify and say oh yes Oh yes, my Jesus loves me. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting eternal life. God loves you and God loves me. And because he loves you and he loves me, he has made a way for you and for me. He has made it in such a way that you will have access to his counsel, to his love at no cost. Why? Because our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has made the way for us on the cross of Calvary.
I'd like to read Isaiah chapter 1 from verse 16. Isaiah 1 beginning reading from verse 16. He said, wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. That thing that is condemning you, that wants to make you to commit suicide, that is limiting you, do away with it. God is saying to you in, in Isaiah 1, 16, he said, wash you, put it away from you, put it behind you, and move forward. <laughs> My senior sister, Mercy, growing up, he said to me, she said, let me tell you some things of life. I want to teach you some things. I said, okay. And she taught me a lot of things. One of it, she said, look, you're a beautiful girl. And a lot of people will want to be friends with you. And you have a lot of bad, bad experience out there. She didn't say you, she just said, but there are a lot of bad, bad experiences out there. But whatever it is, refuse to remain in any bad condition or situation. And you say, for example, <laughs> you, know, you know, I like giving examples. I'm a teacher. <laughs> you say, for example, if a man jilts a girl, you're not supposed to stay there and be pitying yourself. I say, I won't marry again. I won't make another attempt again. I won't this again. I won't that again. Himself, it is. Tell yourself, I beg. <laughs> there are plenty of fishes in the river. There are greater men out there. This one is not my husband. My husband is coming. That will take care of me. That will love me. This one is a passerby. And she said to me, don't kill yourself. In essence, take charge of your emotions. God is saying to us here that let us take care of our emotions. Let's bring them to him in judgment. We are already judged and condemned, but he's saying let's bring them before his throne of grace and ask for mercy. And before his throne of grace, there's no condemnation. There's no judgment. He said, wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes now. Cease to do evil. What did they condemn you for? What did they judge you for? Don't join to condemn yourself and live in it and wallow in it. Come out of it. He said, learn to do well. The answer now to self-condemnation. The answer now to coming out from it. The answer now from that depression. The answer now from that self-wallowing of pity. The answer now from that great feeling, feeling of pain and doom that even lead to suicide for some is found in Isaiah 1, 17. He said, learn to do well. You didn't do it well before. Leave it alone. In that company, you made some mistakes. In the next company, give it your best. That marriage, give it your best. He says, seek judgment. That means anything you want to do, ask, is this right? Ask, is this right? I was in a compound this week. I noticed some people just wash, 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 and pour water into another compound, and their own domots are dry, and somebody says the mud is, is wet. I said to them, I say, it's one of them. If I put of them, I say, you don't like this. Why do you do it to somebody else? In our clip on Nation Building, we, have, we made a clip with the flag of Nigeria on it. And we put there, we have a lot of um, logos like that with Nigeria Nation Building. On Facebook, we have five round pages, search the scriptures, nation building, when you pray and I pray, ministers of the truth, church on the air. In that nation building, we made a lot of clips on nation. One of its slogans, one of it is, do unto others as you want others to do unto you. Mm -hmm. One of it, again, we said that um, uh, fairness, fair play, is the key to togetherness. That one will say, seek peace. That one will say, pursue peace. No, saying the, the greatness of Nigeria depends is in your hand and it's in my hand. What are we trying to say here? We are trying to hear that, say here that let's judge. That thing you want to do, judge it. Is it right? Is it